Hi guys, welcome to this video where I'm about to set up the month of September in my bullet journal to the theme of Costa Rica. So my knowledge of Costa Rica was honestly very little before beginning the research into the country, um, but I instantly thought of tropical beaches and I basically picture that whenever I think of a country around the Caribbean area. So that was really all I could think of at first. Um, but obviously I do a bit of research online for when I'm doing these countries. And what I didn't realize was how much lush rainforest and wildlife reserves, volcanoes and adventure seeking activities are all here with along with those beautiful beaches. So although I was tempted to start the cover page with a gorgeous sunset over a beach, I decided to go for something more along the lines that I had learnt, which was about these beautiful rainforests. And they have a load of waterfalls in Costa Rica. And there's one in particular that stood out for me called the Rio Celeste waterfall. And what's special about it is the blue water at the base of the waterfall. Apparently, photos don't do it justice and it's this completely cool ice blue water that's just luminescent and is really a sight to see in real life so that is what took the the lead on the cover page for this month i just thought it would be really cool to have our girl looking from above down at the waterfall itself there's these awesome wooden steps that go up the side um, that you can yeah get really high and look down upon this lovely little lagoon in the jungle um, it just looked amazing so i thought it would be definitely worth putting on this cover page because i would for sure love to see that in real life now the height of this waterfall is 30 meters or 100 feet but the tallest waterfall in costa rica is actually 600 feet or 182 meters high which is an incredible drop and that would be a sight to see as well and now there's so many waterfalls that i don't think i even found how many there are i don't know if they actually know how many there are there's a lot that are hidden in the jungle and yeah just so many to count but it looks absolutely beautiful and so i also learned that they are incredibly diverse with their animals and their flora and fauna over there so i did want to include one of their special animals onto the cover page. One to add some color in there, but also because I just found so many species of animals that I wanted to draw big time. So one of the famous birds to see in Costa Rica is the scarlet macaw. Now these incredible birds are native to Costa Rica and they can live as long as 60 years. And I don't know about you, but I never really think about the age of wild animals out there. And to think that a bird could have been around for 60 years just blows my mind. I mean, obviously animals last, last a long time, especially elephants and turtles, and I know that. But to think that a bird could be alive, you know, when your parents or grandparents were alive as well, it just, yeah, I find that really interesting. So that was a little side note there. And now I'll get back to the topic. So another thing that I found interesting about these scarlet macaws is that they were actually once nearly extinct as well. So if you saw my India uh, weekly, as you would have learnt that the one -horn, greater one-horned rhino was also close to extinction, but they managed to save them and they have done the same over here. So Costa Rica have made laws that prohibits the capture of them. And then through the amazing efforts of other organizations, they've managed to repopulate these birds. And now they're quite easily spotted amongst the coastal forests of the country including one spot that looks amazing called Manuel Antonio National Park. So this is like a tropical paradise um, and the, the sunset images that I saw from here were just amazing. So if you want spectacular views, amazing animals and all the gorgeous bushes and trees um, and beaches, this is the place to go. That's one thing I've learned from Costa Rica. Um, although I didn't know it before, this place is totally a spot to go for if you just want to immerse yourself in nature. So as you can see, I'm illustrating the cover page on a separate piece of paper. This one I'm using is a marker paper because I recently got sent some beautiful markers from Artex and I'm using them. I've been itching to use them, so I'm using them on the front cover page. These ones are alcohol based, so I did make sure to use that marker paper because otherwise it is just going to you know, ruin the paper and it's going to go straight through journal pages. No matter what thickness you've got, they just, yeah, they just eat through because they're alcohol based. So I'm doing that on the separate page like this. And then I am also free to add paint or watercolor or whatever else I wanted to add 
as I went. And to be honest, I didn't have a plan going into this. I just knew I wanted to use the markers. And then as I was illustrating the jungle part, I found that I just wanted more texture in there. So I brought out some acrylic paint, which I haven't used in a little while. I've been sort of moving more towards my watercolors and my gouache, but it was really nice to get back into a bit of acrylic painting. It dried so lovely and quick and it was able to layer very easily. So I was able to achieve that effect of that really bushy, tropical forest in the background that I wanted and it gave me some texture as well. So I kept the bird in my markers and then like usual I like to keep my girl there in black and white. So yeah it was nice having the ability to just mix up the media on this cover page and really just have fun with it and I really enjoyed draw drawing this out and painting it. It was very relaxing. <laughs> And then once I had finished all the coloured parts of this piece, I thought I would add in some sparkle by using my gold pen. And so I'm basically just laying this wherever I feel like some sunshine might be hitting our objects or, you know, just really just trying to glam it up a little bit and just add a little bit more sparkle and fun to it. So I've put it down the right hand side of the girl and then on some leaves and the side of the macaw itself. And then it was time to cut this guy up and stick him into the journal. I did use my round corner hole punch so that it just sort of finishes off the spread. This time I didn't go ahead and do my dividers like I have been doing for the last few months. It just gives me a little bit more space to work with throughout the setup. Um, so no particular reason, but I just knew that I didn't want to sort of cut into this cover page much. And then I always like to title this cover page with the name of the month. Obviously this is September, so I thought I would put it into a little additional circle that I just cut out of normal paper, um, added some more gold on the outside. And then I really like the style of font that I chose to use. I just did like a really very calligraphy gold S scriptish font in the background and then uh, almost a typewritery font over the top with the letters for sept. So I really like how that turned out, um, but it's something that's very simple to do and just keeps it quite minimal. Okay, and now we're moving on to my calendar spread. So this is the page where I have my monthly calendar where I put, I tend to put birthdays and just occasions so that I can flick back to there to make sure I'm not missing out on anything that I need to buy for or make a card for, etc. Um, so on this page, I decided to do more animals because I was so, as I said before, I was just so shocked at how many awesome animals are here in Costa Rica. And one of the animals that is very popular right now and has been in my thoughts for a long time because um, one of my best friends is obsessed with sloths and you can see sloths very easily in Costa Rica. So. This is definitely a spot to go if you want to see sloths in the wild. I didn't realize that there's actually two kinds of sloths. There's a two-toed sloth and a three-toed sloth. So the one I've illustrated here is a brown-throated sloth, which has three toes. And I learned some interesting things about them as an animal. So their fur, if you've ever seen photos of sloths, it looks really wiry, like strong, thick, wiry fur and sometimes it actually turns green from the algae that lives in the fur. And it's basically a breeding ground for lots of insects, including fungi and moths. Um, so the moths pretty much lay their eggs, all these insects lay their eggs into the fur and it just breeds and breeds. And that algae gives it that green tinge, which actually helps it to camouflage amongst the trees. So that would obviously help deter um, any predators. But then also it's probably not a very tasty meal with all these um, flavors from the algae and all the insects as well. So it gives them a good bit of camouflage and a pretty good defense mechanism. And the algae actually also provides some supplemental nutrition for the sloth um, and the fungi helps fend off parasites. So it actually all has purpose and their whole being and their whole body is like a little ecosystem in itself. So I found that very interesting and I could keep going on about sloths, but I'll try and 
get to the other animals on this spread. So the national animal for Costa Rica is actually the deer, the white-tailed deer. So I've illustrated this on that page as well, and along with a hummingbird, which are often spotted in Costa Rica, and the red-eyed tree frog. So these are all native to Costa Rica, and they were just awesome animals that I just felt like I had to draw. So I tried to keep it quite simple on this spread by just doing fine liner and just a touch of color to add something. But to be honest, I wasn't overly happy with, I like the drawings themselves, but I wasn't overly happy with the, um, the color choices. I think it would have looked better in color, but yeah, just this pop of red is a little bit, it's giving me, I don't know, Christmas vibes. I think it's the green and gold, um, the red and gold, just giving me Christmas feelings. That's not quite what I was going for on the spread. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with the drawings themselves and it's actually even given me an idea to do some hummingbird stickers because it's not the first time I've drawn a hummingbird and I really enjoyed drawing it so I thought I'd make a sticker range um, so yeah keep your eyes peeled for that one I might bring that out soon or as soon as I can get it done and this is how the page turned out after I did some calligraphy text for the September at the top in that golden red Moving on to the next page, which is my needs and wants page. Now this one, I usually like to find something that you can buy in the country that you can bring home with you or something quite special and unique in a product form um, for this because needs and wants are products that I need to buy throughout the month. So it kind of ties in to that idea. Um, and I came across these awesome masks, which are called Barucan masks, because they're made by the Baruca people, which are a very proud and native tribe of Costa Rica. So for over 500 years, these masks have been made by the tribes, and they were first created and worn with the intent to scare the unwelcome Spanish invaders back to Spain. Um, they were successful in keeping their lands, hence why they're very proud, and these Masks um, come in all different shapes and forms and there's three particular styles that they go for. The first, which is the original, is known as the Diablito, which is the devil mask, and that's the most traditional one. And then a little bit further on in time, something called Ecologica was designed, which is where they feature animals and plants of the rainforest of Costa Rica. And then there's a newer version, which is basically a blend of the two called Combinados. So I tried to design one that looked very similar to what I saw a lot of. They're always very long and skinny and they feature a lot of interesting things. So I tried to do a little blend of a couple that I saw while trying to keep that sort of 3D effect that they have. They're actually carved from balsa wood and cedar and they're just 2D on the back and then they've just carved them out of the front in all these amazing 3D shapes that make them really very dimensional and stand out really well. Beautiful colors. I just was really loving these masks. So I was glad that I could get a place to use them properly. In terms of how I'm illustrating this mask, I'm actually using my Holbein gouache, uh, which I'm really enjoying using lately. It's something that you can water down to give you more light watercolor like effects, or you can use almost straight out of the tube as an acrylic sort of feeling to it. Um, and the color choices I'm choosing, as you'll see on the next page, they're all the colors of a passion fruit. So those greens and like a rich purpley color and just a touch of yellow as well. So just trying to keep a consistent palette across this page because they are completely different um, ideas and they're, I could really choose whatever color I wanted on the mask. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to keep that palette consistent across it. Now as for my next page, which is my meal planner page, I decided to keep this one a little bit different this time. Um, I just wanted to choose one thing that I could use as an element that would run down the edge of my page. I basically did a different bullet journal setup, like as a display copy for a local supplier recently. And I really enjoyed doing um, just some simple, colorful, and quite graphic, almost bookmark style on the page. So I really wanted to do that here. And the national dish for Costa Rica is called 
gallo pinto, which is a rice and beans kind of dish. So very tricky to draw, just a lot of rice and beans. Um, so I just thought I'd give myself a break and just choose a very tropical fruit that you find a lot in Costa Rica um, and just go with that. So I'm sorry I didn't go very in depth with the foods from Costa Rica. It all sounded delicious. And actually the gallo pinto is something that I cook probably quite regularly. I often do beans and rice and just mix that in with whatever you know dinner I'm doing. So I can totally understand that. Uh, but I just thought I'd go for more of the tropical fruit kind of adventure down this side of the page. So I chose a very popular fruit, which is the passion fruit. Um, and so I love the colors of passion fruit. And when I saw the pictures, I just thought it would make a really nice um, strip of pattern down this side. So I went with it and you'll see me now mapping it out. And I just illustrated them quite simply and put in the passion fruit vines and the leaves in behind. And yeah, I'm really, I really like how this one turned out. It makes me want to use the spread a bit more when it's just that clean line of um, drawing down the side. And then finishing this page off with my titles for each day. And then I recognized that I wrote all the names of the days and then got to the bottom and realized I forgot to put in the title. So typical me had to fix that up. Um, but all I did was just use my white whiteout. I don't know, this has got lots of names elsewhere. It's a whiteout strip or um, tipex, some people call it. Put the, or liquid paper, that's another one, <laughs> liquid paper. Um, yeah, and then just painted with my gouache paint back over the top and relabeled everything. <laughs> and then this page was complete. And now moving on to my mind map page, which is where I tend to write things that don't actually have a place throughout the rest of my journal. So if you've been watching me for a while, you'll know that this is my version of a brain dump spread. And on this page, I normally like to include either a well-recognized person from the country that we're investigating, or sometimes it has been just a traditional person from that country in maybe their traditional dress or something. But this one is actually going to be a singer from Costa Rica, and her name is Debbie Nova. Now this talented artist is very well known in Costa Rica. She's been playing the piano since she was four and she plays um, guitar and sings and has even collaborated with quite a few famous acts like Black Eyed Peas, Britney Spears and my personal favorite, Ricky Martin. She was also nominated at the Grammy Awards last year for the best urban album. And her music is a real blend of styles and that's what's sort of setting her apart in the music world. So in addition to all that, I thought she was the ideal candidate for this page. She's also very active on environmental and social issues, including being a UN ambassador for the UN Women Say No, where they're uniting to end violence against women. So I thought she was a great person to have here on my mind map. And I am illustrating her like I normally do if you've been to the channel before. I tend to try and focus on realistic skin and face, and then I will go a little bit more graphic for the rest of the spread. So this one I'm using my Prismacolor pencils for her skin tone and her eyes um, and just trying to get as much realism as I can in a relatively short time on dotted grid paper. The other thing I like to include on the mind map page is the country's national flower. Now Costa Rica's national flower is a beautiful one. It's called the Guaria Morada, which is a beautiful purple orchid and it translates to purple country girl. So I thought that went kind of well, illustrating this Costa Rican girl surrounded by a lot of purple, beautiful flowers. I've popped some in her hair and then some down at the bottom just to sur surround the spread. Um, and tried to include as much sort of summery tropicalness as I can on the page without overcrowding it. So now that I've got her skin tone and her facial features a little bit more laid out, I then like to go in and create some of the graphic elements around her. So I'm starting with her hair, just using fine liners and I'm using two thicknesses to create a little bit of dimension in there. So wherever there is a, like a darker area of hair I will use a thicker stroke and then I just use a lot of lines to sort of portray strands of hair there. I really like this effect in 
my drawings. I've been doing it quite a bit lately and I just think it's it's nice. It's a nice way to get some movement in hair without having to go for complete realism and you don't need any other colors. You don't need anything but a pen or pencil and just following the movements of each strand kind of gives a really cool flowy effect. I'm also using the plain fine liner for the elements around her like her shirt and the flowers that are in her hair and in the foreground there. And then to color those flowers in, I'm using my Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in the color purple. And then where I wanted a little bit less bold shading and I wanted it to be a little bit lighter, I'm just running a bit of the marker onto a ceramic plate and then using a water pen to lift some of that color to put onto the page. So it's almost like you're creating a watercolor from your water-based marker. If you haven't tried this, um, I think it's a really good way to use minimal products um, on a spread in your journal, as long as it can handle some water. This journal I'm using is obviously my own journal. Um, or I say obviously, if you don't know, this is my own journal that I've created. They are for sale if you're interested in buying one. The links are always down in the description box. Um, so this one's got 180 GSM paper, so it means I can use water um, quite well. You still wouldn't want to use too much in any bullet journal, I personally think. So I just like to use little light places for it, and that's why those water pens are very handy sometimes. It just allows you to give a little bit of water and spread that color around. And then to highlight everything on this page, I love to add some gold. So it was time for my gold pen, and then this spread was done. And I'm now moving on to the next page, which is my goodliness spread. The goodliness, if you haven't been here before, is my habit trackers page. So this is where I track all my good habits, hence the name goodliness. Um, now for this one, I decided to do something a little bit different. This this whole setup, by the way, is a little bit um, jumbled. You know, it's not it's not using the same products that I always use. It's really trying to be different on each spread. I was just feeling in a little bit of a creative and experimental kind of mood. So on this page, I'm using some of my raw craft paper and I'm just ripping the edges to give it sort of that worn look. And then the subject matter is an awesome thing that I totally want to do when I go to Costa Rica. And that is staying in a tree house. So they actually have these tree houses over there amongst the rainforest and you can sleep there and hire these out. This one in particular is actually an Airbnb treehouse. So I had a good nosy through it, it looks awesome. And just the fact that you can be up in the trees looking out from your bedroom and being really amongst the forest. You'd feel like a sloth, it would be amazing. Um, so I wanted to illustrate that um, and I'm just doing it yeah, quite simply with a Pigma Micron fine liner using a lot of hatching techniques um, where you use a lot of lines to create the shading and just vary the thicknesses and the proximity of the lines themselves and that's what gives you that um, tonal sort of range. And then in the background, I'm just doing very, very sparse little bits of trees and bushes just to give the effect that you're surrounded completely by nature. So although I'd never even considered staying in a treehouse, I didn't really even think that it would be done anywhere or possible. So this blew my mind um, and I'm sure it's not the only place in the world, but it's definitely the first time I've seen it. Um, so it's absolutely a highlight if I was to go there. That's one of the things I would like to do. And this isn't the only one. There's set, like I saw at least 20 treehouse places in Costa Rica. So definitely if you haven't been there and you're planning or you're closer than I am and you're planning to go there I would say experience that I reckon it would be awesome to just be really part of nature and surrounded by animals and lushness and so then once I had finished with my building I felt I needed to sort of set it back into that foliage a little bit better so I've gone ahead and darkened up everything around the treehouse so it's all black in there and then I just wanted to add some sparkle or life to it. So I got out my gold pen and added in some feature parts to it. Now for the mini calendars, which I like to include here. It just saves me writing 
all of these numbers down again and again. Um, so I've got these available on my website to as a free printable if you wanted them for your journal. Um, the link to the website is down in the description box, but it also is on the page on my shop tab where you can find free printables and downloads. So once I cut that out, I wanted to set it on a sort of a border or a background of that same craft paper. So I just ripped the top to make it sort of match and then gave a simple border around the edge. And then this is where I added in the title and lots of gold to sort of tie the two spreads together and add a little bit more life to it because it was maybe a little bit too plain for me. And then to even jazz it up a little bit more, I thought it might be cool to add some washi tape. So I went through my little washi tape collection and found something that I felt went nicely with it. And it's this one that has um, lemons and flowers all in like a black sort of hatching or stippling technique with a hint of gold. So I thought that went quite nicely with the spread, but is definitely very different to what I normally do. So here's how the final page turned out. And now we are on to the final page for this setup, which is my week one weekly setup page. So this is where I have every day of the week and I will write down my tasks that I need to complete each day. And I do some time blocking on here. So it's definitely an essential setup page for me. Um, and the artwork for this particular page, I decided to focus on another natural beauty of Costa Rica which is the volcanoes. This volcano is called Arenal Volcano and is probably the most famous volcano within Costa Rica. It was actually Costa Rica's most active volcano and it was regularly erupting and spewing out enormous amounts of lava on a regular basis until 2010. So 2010 it turned into a resting volcano so now we won't see that but apparently it could start up again at any time any could be a matter of months or years um, so I found that very interesting and the things that you can do there are so broad so obviously there's a ton of adventure things that you can do like white water rafting and lakes to explore hikes like trails, um, all that national park goodness to investigate. So there's all that kind of stuff. And then there's also a lot of luxury hotels and lodges and bungalows to stay in around the area. So the view I chose to illustrate on this page is as if you were at one of the hotels that look directly onto the arenal volcano. And the volcano itself is so symmetrical that it was, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a photographer and artist's dream it's just amazing to see and these pools actually look straight over this rainforest and jungle that move up to this very symmetrical volcano so I was taken aback by the photo that I found and so I thought I would try to draw that in a bit of a random kind of way I'm using washi tape um, as my pool water so there are two pools in the foreground there and then I'm using my gold pen as any foliage that's in the shot and then just my Pigma Micron fine liner to illustrate the volcano itself um, and yeah so it's a bit of an unusual way to represent it but I just like to keep these weeklies fairly simple and just monochromatic um, and then with that pop of color from a washi tape. So this is how this one turned out and now I'm all ready to start preparing for the month of September in my journal. So now I will show you a little recap of what we just created for the September setup. And first I would love to say thank you to my newest Patreon members, which are Michelle W, Charlotte S, Heidi S, Franca, Mona Lee A and Anita B. Thank you so much for joining up guys and I hope you're enjoying the content so far. If anyone else would like to offer their further support, um, check out the link to my Patreon page down in the description box and you can sign up from as little as $2 a month to get extra content and more behind the scenes stuff. 
I do hope you enjoyed this month's setup exploring Costa Rica. I know I did. And I'll see you guys next week when we finish off the Costa Rican adventure in the bullet journal with some weekly setups. So thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Bye bye.